Hey guys, I sold a pair of bell scissors. The auction was kind of crazy, but in the end, the final bidder paid and they got their scissors in the mail. So that's awesome, but I'm probably going to have to do something different for number two. Right now, I just want to make a normal video again. I'm not totally happy with how I make the buttons. I've tried several different methods. Right now, I cut them out of a block, then I flip them over and cut off the extra material. The issue is, I'm having parallelism problems. On the surface, it's not really a big deal. Where it matters is in the counter bores. The screws that hold down the button don't actually bind down on the button. There needs to be a tiny gap. This is important because the pins slightly change distance as the scissors open and close. But I want this gap as small as possible because if it's sloppy, the pins won't move evenly together when you press the button. So I need this surface to be parallel with this surface. I bought a small tip for this dial indicator. The number I'm looking for is 48 thou. You can see I'm close here, but if I go to the opposite side of the counter bore, I get a different number, so we aren't parallel to the bottom of the button. They aren't all this bad, and some are actually worse, but that's what I don't like, the inconsistency. Every time you move a part in the machine, you're introducing inaccuracy. What if there was a way to machine the bottom surface at the same time I machined the counter bores? I thought that these parts would be good to make in a lathe with live tooling. It could be milled and then parted off from round material. I did something similar in the mill with my pins. I thought maybe if I use a slitting saw, I could do the same thing on bigger parts. I could even make multiple at a time. I could mill the outside of several at once, then do the chamfers of all of them, and then only the counter bores would have to be separate for each button. Let's try it. Here's the slitting saw and arbor. I have to make sure I don't put it on backwards. I want it to cut the same way as an end mill. My first attempt didn't go so great. I hoped the serrated jaws would be enough to hold the stock in place. But nope, it's never a good idea with round stock. So I made some soft jaws. I clamped in a piece of aluminum and then I milled out a pocket. And adjusted it to fit. Maybe too much. So I adjusted the vise and tried again. I also bumped the camera. Sorry. But my cuts were a little aggressive, so the tool started pulling out of the spindle. <sighs> Let's take a lighter cut and do two passes. This time it held good in the jaws. Okay, now we can do the chamfer. I'm starting with just one button for now. I'm doing things in a little bit of a weird order to make patterning it easier later. Now I face it. Next, I mill the counter bores and holes. And then I decided to do a little engraving. Finally, we're at the saw. I think you only want a conventional mill with it. And I heard you should take passes around the same size as the thickness of saw you're using. So for this 62 thou thick saw, I'm taking 62 thou passes. I'm also having it cut in an arc shape. My idea is that this will leave a more rigid tab. A straight tab might flop around. That wasn't so bad. It's stuck. Hmm. I made it leave around 20 thou. And I tried going thinner and thinner and I still couldn't budge it. Oh, there it goes. And here it is. A small burr is left behind, but it can be sanded off pretty easily. 
Unfortunately, it didn't come out flat, which means the counterboards aren't the same. So I tried again. That was a bit of a weird run. This time, I tried facing towards the solid jaw instead of sideways. And this time it stayed on the tab, which is now only 5 thou thick. This is definitely an improvement. But what really matters is the counterbores. And everywhere seems like it's within a thou. Might be even better if I improve my sanding method. Let's try making four at once. This time, I faced off one end in the lathe to try to make it sit better in the vise. I also turned everything sideways to see if it'd run even better. Now we do all the chamfers. Here's where the pattern starts. We face, do the holes and counterbores, engrave, then we saw. I added an M0 to the pattern, but I wasn't really thinking about how it would stop the tool right here. Anyway, now we can start again. Face, holes and counterbores, engrave, saw, get the part, and do it again. And again. Oh boy. I thought I gave myself enough room for the arbor, but I did not. I rehomed the machine and set everything up to try again. This time I'm using a 3 8 inch end mill because I need longer flukes. I took it real cautiously because I'm worried about the tool pressure from the bigger tool. So now we can go through the whole thing again. Success. How could we make this even more productive? I could make a pallet with a bunch of bars, but we aren't actually using a lathe, so we could use a rectangular piece of stock, then pattern multiple inside. The patterns can get pretty ridiculous, so I made an arrow to show what's going on. We do the operations for several stacks of buttons, then saw along each side. This would be easier with a straight tab instead of a curved one, which I didn't try. Let's see if it's actually worse. Seems fairly stable so far. You can see how it rocks back and forth though. I don't think it's worse than the curved one. So that could work, but I actually do like using the round bar. When I buy 7075 aluminum, it's always saw cut badly. It's nice having an accurate size to hold on to. Even if I have to face it in the lathe, I think it might be a win. Maybe I could combine it with my old strategy. I could simplify things. I'll just face and saw off blank buttons and skip the holes.
Then, I can put them in the old fixture. Maybe when they're already separate parts, they'll screw down flatter. Then, they can be faced so I don't have to sand them. And, I can do all the counterbores all at once, instead of having to switch back and forth between tools. This didn't work out very good. You can see the face mill didn't clean them up all perfectly. I even gave myself extra material to work with. And of course the counterbores aren't consistent either. I think this bottom part of the clamp is pushing up on the buttons or something. So I think my original plan was the best. The last thing I could try is patterning the pattern. I cut out the shape of four buttons Then after pulling off all four, or three, because I forgot what I was doing, the end mill runs the contour again. And we can do four more. In theory, you can make this as tall as you want. I don't think I will though. It did seem like there might be more chatter on the saw higher up. I was tweaking the RPM from 1200 down to around 900 trying to find the best sound. I had it set for 1000 per tooth, so that's around 50 inches a minute. So I still might have to tweak things, but it seems like I found a better way to make these parts. And if I make more than one bar at a time, it'll also be faster. And it was fun to try out the slitting saw. Let me know if you have any tips on using the slitting saw. Or maybe I gave you some ideas for something you make. Thanks for watching. Bye.